Welcome to Empowered Within, a soul-clenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire. Through candid and inspiring conversations, leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hello, everyone. I am excited to introduce you to our guest today, Marie Diamond. She is one of the world's top transformational leaders, speakers, and best-selling author. She is the only European star featured in the worldwide phenomenon movie, The Secret. She merges her intuitive knowledge of the law of attraction with her studies of quantum physics, meditation, feng shui, and dowsing to transform the success of individuals and corporations. Her clients include billionaires, A-list celebrities, writers, speakers, CEOs, Fortune 500 companies, governments, and more than 300,000 students online. Welcome, Marie. I am so honored to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Jennifer. I'm so excited to be here. Ah, So am I. Everything feng shui. I am so thrilled. I have been a feng shui lover since I was just a wee little girl. So this is just such an honor to have you. I would love to know, because you are the global energy master, where did it all begin for you? How did you fall in love with feng shui? Well, you know, as a child, I already was actually connected in with the spaces very much because I could see the energy, uh, the aura field of people, but also the aura field of places and I could see like where there was good energy and where there was not such a good energy but I had no idea there was like something that was called feng shui right and so it's only when I was 15 after a major accident and a near-death experience that I asked my spiritual mentor I already had at that time like what did I do wrong you know what is it that attracted me to have this accident and he said Marie you have bad feng shui and I was like what's that (laughs) right you know you have to know I'm from Belgium a little beautiful city called Bruges uh, world renowned um, Catholic upbringing so no idea (laughs) about feng shui and so he explained to me that the Chinese had an energy system built for 4,000 years where they actually knew how the chi was moving, a little bit like acupuncture for the body, there's acupuncture for the home. And so he gave me some basic steps and I kind of kept going with that for like, till I was like 30. And then um, he actually told me that it was time for me to go and study and get uh, connected with a, a grandmaster in feng shui, what I did. And that's where, like, suddenly everything fell in place. Like, oh, of course, that is why I see good chi there and not good chi there. And so it was really interesting understanding my own life, my own life journey. And I remember after knowing about feng shui, I just moved to another place in the house. And suddenly from being a lonely, bullied girl, um, I became very popular, very, you know, well-liked. And I was like, I stayed the same. I knew I didn't change, but my environment changed. And so I knew that by moving from a north, a room that was in the north where there was no sunlight coming in to a room that was in the west where there was beautiful sunlight and sunsets, I just felt much more happier. And so everybody actually would feel more happier if they moved there. And so it's like suddenly I uh, changed my environment hanged out different posters, created my posters. And so everything around me was suddenly aligned with who I was. And so that's how I started my feng shui journey. Oh, that is so amazing. That makes so much sense though, too. I noticed the same thing. I must face Southwest. My house, my office, my life is complete then. If I don't see the sunset every day, I feel like something has been missing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's really interesting. You know, some people really, really like more the sunset, others are sunrise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Depending also on their birthday um, and the energy number they have and what kind of chi flow they have. Some people will be all about the sunrise and others all about the okay. sunset. So it's quite interesting to see how it aligns with you. It is very interesting. And you have an energy numbers book, which I have to tell you, I purchased this maybe four or five months ago. And I 
I, I redid, I got my number. Now I don't resonate with the number, but I did everything that it said, the colors, the way everything should be facing down to my vision board. And I'll tell you what, Marie, on my vision board, I have to look and see exactly what it says. It says to be a top producing uh, podcaster in the world. And in under 90 days of having this podcast, it came true. I had no idea till someone called and told me the podcast is in the top 10% out of 2.8 million. I just really implemented everything that you had said. I'm a number six. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try. I've always been very good with feng shui, but I thought, no, I'm going to tweak it one step further because you mentioned that this takes you an extra 33%. Yes. Of increasing your feng shui. So would you explain a little bit about that so that people understand that a little bit more? Of course. So, you know, when we look at the law of attraction, um, there most people use the law of attraction to just focus on their mindsets. Yeah, to just really make sure they have positive thoughts, gratitude, and making sure they have the goals written down. They have perhaps a vision board aligned with their goals and they are doing the affirmations, they start practicing uh, or meditation or visualizations to get to that goal. So when I started doing all this, I still attracted this accent because I knew this information quite early on when I was about seven, eight years old. And um, and still I attract this accident. And so then I understood that there were three aspects of the law of attraction. And the first part is what we call the heavenly luck. It's kind of your law of attraction of your soul. So your soul is born in a certain place with certain parents, with certain talents, a certain destiny, right? So that is called your karma or destiny or fate. And so that is important and responsible, but not 100%, only like 33.3%. It's responsible for your soul law of attraction. The second part where the secret really talks about is, you know, how you think, how do you feel, how, what do you take action upon? is actually your human luck. And so it's not just only your thoughts and all how you feel that um, will attract something and all the massive actions you take, because it's possible you do all this and you still hit a ceiling. And because that is only responsible for 33.3%. So what I understood is that there is a third part that's called your environment and the feng shui masters understood that like 4,000 years ago already that your environment is responsible for the last part of the law of attraction. And so in order to align with that, we need to do um, uh, some calculation. And so the calculation is creating your energy number. And you can actually go to my website, marydiamond.com, and then get your free energy report where it kind of asks your gender and your birthday, and it gives you an energy number. And you don't have to resonate with it, just you have to follow up what that number brings you. And for you, it is you are a creator, yeah? So you love creating, yeah? You love, and actually, number six, as you have, is very good with media, by the way, yeah? yeah? So like radio, television is really good for you. And so that is, you know, the number, but then that number gives you four compass direction that are really good for you, a success one, uh, for success and money, health, relationship, and wisdom. And you actually can go to your um, app store or Google Play store and download for free the Mary Diamond app. And there it will again ask your name, of course, your birthday, your gender, and then it will give you a compass. And so this is kind of the compass that you're getting. Okay. And so on the compass, again, you will have a success direction a health relationship and wisdom direction. And so you're holding um, that compass in your hand and like you stand in the center of a room, like the center of your office, the center of your bedroom, center of your living room, just the rooms where you do sleep, work or live, not where you do the laundry, where you do the cooking, that's not important. And so you look, where is your success direction? And so you have to understand your home is like a three dimensional vision board. Everything around you is giving you subconsciously messages and supports your mindset or blocks your mindset, supports your feelings or block it, or helps to support your actions or uh, diminish the energy of your actions. So if you know that and you align energy, for example, you're talking about your vision board. If you put your vision board on your success direction, 
then your vision board will have 33.3% more results of happening. Yeah. Yes. So can you imagine that's like one time thing, you don't even have to meditate, you don't have to uh, think all the time positive thoughts, you just have to make sure that you put your vision board in the right place. You make sure that what's in your success direction is positive. Like I have in my success direction, my, um, my products, my books, my home study courses, my awards, my certificates. Yeah, because that is like aligning and that success direction is there for the rest of your life. It doesn't change. Yeah. And so once you do that, you're actually fully uh, doing the law of attraction and not just on the destiny level, on your mindset and emotional level, but also in your environment. And I always say, People have to understand your environment can be blocking you and stopping you from getting to that next level. And so what you experience by following this basic information and then getting the energy number book, who is then um, available also, is that you are doing feng shui, but it's the feng shui for the law of attraction. Yeah. Yes. And so as you're aligning that, suddenly things start happening and you're like, I, what did I do for that? Well, you did exactly what you were doing before and you had the right mindset, but suddenly the flow of chi in the world just starts expanding with 33%. And that's quite a lot. That is huge. I love that. I have another question for you. What is the difference between the wealth and the success corner? Because I know I stumble, I trip up, I get too mental about that. I'm Jill Jardine, host of Cosmic Scene with Jill Jardine. Check out this cutting-edge podcast, which brings you astrological updates and sun sign forecasts, as well as astrological insights and psychic hits on current and upcoming events, including astrological analysis of cryptocurrency trajectories. Cosmic Scene with Jill Jardine also features guests who are healers, yogis, mystics, mediums, and more. All movers and shakers in the consciousness shifting movement. Tune in and turn on. Yeah, so there are different um, schools in feng shui. So uh, there is what we call the, the Western school for feng shui called the Bakwa school. And they will uh, work with the uh, wealth corner. Yeah. So the wealth corner for them is always the same area of the house for everyone. Now, the success direction, what I'm using is based on the compass school. It's a very ancient feng shui school and it is not for everybody the same. The success direction for you can be uh, west. For me, it is southwest. Yeah. For somebody else it can be north. For somebody else it can be southeast. So it is very aligned with your personal birthday. Yeah. So the wealth corner is something that Western feng shui is using. I don't use that personally, um, but I do use the personal feng shui. Okay. So that's where I was getting confused because I was trying to do both. Yeah. Got it. So the yeah. vision board is in the success West direction. Awesome. And so I also want to talk about, you have a very special way of using and designing an, a vision board for each person. Will you share that? Yeah. Cause that's phenomenal in itself. Yes, I call it a diamond uh, vision board. And so, you know, a lot of times people, they get a paper and they kind of look through magazines and then they kind of look for quotes and pictures and they kind of stick it all on a paper and then they hang it up, right? Right. But it's, it's not very um, productive always because you have to start first with your goals, yeah? So you have to make goals about success. That can be your career, your business, money relationships, wisdom, that means your education, your spirituality, your religion, um, and your health and your well-being. And so we in Feng Shui say you have four pillars to build a house. Yeah. And so what we then do, we take that paper. And when we take the paper, let me just take like the paper. Yeah. And so in the center, because most people, what they do, they forgot to put in for who it is. So right. in the center yes. of your, I don't know if you can see that. A little yeah. bit. Yep. You're supposed to put you. Right. I did. I did yeah. that. I put a huge picture of myself right in the center. 
correct. Yes. So you have to think about your paper is the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are the center of the universe. So you have to put a picture, of course, an updated picture, not one where you're a baby, right? In the center, right? And then one of the things is that we are actually looking to divide the paper in eight areas. Yeah. So it kind Mm -hmm. of becomes like a sun. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the interesting enough in feng shui, the south stands is on the north, is on the top, and the north is on the bottom. And the west is on the right, and the east is on the center. Right. Why is that? The south stands for the sun, so you want to have the sun above you. And the north stands for water, so you always want to have water under you. Otherwise, you're drowning and you're burning, so you can't have that. And then people, based on that, they will place things for their success, health, relationship, and misdirectionist, they will put that in their vision board. And so if you get the energy number book, that's actually, it gives you the outline of your vision board. And then um, you will always write down the goals because as you're writing down the goals that you have written down on paper, you also will look for pictures that, that relate with that, yeah? And so you put that in there And because the brain needs to see not just pictures, it needs to see and it needs to be able to read what your goals are. So for me, I have my vision board up. And so I go actually every day to my vision board and I look at my vision board. I read what's on my vision board. I look at the pictures, you know, sometimes people I put on there. I'm like, hey, how are you? And I'm talking. It's like I have a communication with my vision board. But you put your vision board always in your success direction right. or relationship direction, whatever is possible in your space. And you put it not on the ground, not too high, just really like you can see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then your subconscious mind is getting it all the time. Yeah. And so um, another step is then every year we do a, um, a vision board workshop in the beginning of the year where I give them specific keywords, specific colors specific symbols that work for your energy number to put on your vision board. So every year people do again their vision board. And so normally it's from November to uh, February, people go through a whole course with me to um, make it even more precise for uh, for that year. Because as in Chinese New Year, we do have new energy coming in. And so there's new vibrations and I can actually already predict what are the life lessons you're going to learn and how can you activate it with the right colors, the right symbols. So your vision board is really going to a whole new level. And this is how I set up a personal vision board. That is really cool. When you have your vision board and the one thing that I had on there, it happened. I didn't even realize. And I looked up and I said, oh my God, you had these words and a picture up there. Now, do you take something down and off once it's happened? Do you put, and then what do you do with it? Do you put it on a, a like, congratulations, you did this? Like, what happens next? Well, what I do personally is I, I put post-it notes <laughs> on it and I say, thank you, universe. Yeah, I put it on there and I leave it there for a couple of weeks and then I take it off and put something new. Because you also have to express your gratitude, you know, to the universe. So, but you, some people do that exactly Um they take off what they have uh, manifested and and like a congratulation paper. Yeah. And they hang it again on their success direction. So you can do that. That's actually a fun thing. Okay. Okay. Now two of the areas that people always want to know about is how can I bring in more wealth revenue and how can I bring in love? So how do we do that? You know, one of the things in feng shui that we need to uh, look into is that uh, your front door, Mm-hmm. Yeah, your front door is actually what we call the mouth of chi, the mouth of wealth. So each time you have to think the universe has all the abundance. Each time you open the door and you come into your apartment or come into your studio or your house, you bring that abundance in. But if there is not a match with a first impression, the money will stay on your door. So make sure there's like a fresh carpet or fresh um, uh, mat on the front door. When you open the door, make sure it is light, it is welcoming. 
You don't want to see like shoes on the ground or coats hanging. You want to have like beautiful or a bouquet of flowers or a candle or pictures of the family. Like when you come in, you're like, oh, I'm at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And always put some items with gold. Yeah. In the, at the entrance, okay. because gold is actually the symbol of abundance, symbol of money. And also on your office, uh, make sure you have some symbols like golden symbols, mm-hmm. um, like close to you. Or I have like uh, here something in gold where I put my uh, markers in. So the more you put golden things around you, does that be real gold? Yeah, just fake gold is good. It's actually, it gives subconsciously that message like I'm open to abundance. But also if you have certificates, if you have pictures that are important to you, put them in gold looking frames because think about the rich and wealthy. They have a lot of golden frames around them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're actually vibrating on that golden level. The second thing I would suggest is make sure you declutter, your space clear you know, let go of things because the more you create space for something, then the more it can come in. And so put the intention as you are going through your closet, through your cabinets, uh, even through your computer, your phone, you know, just say my intention is I'm space clearing for money. And I've seen so many times people saying, oh, I found this business card. Oh, I always want to connect with that person. Okay, call that person then. Or I even had like an envelope with $1,000. I forgot that I had it. Like suddenly the money appears, right? Or um, books that I'm like, oh, this is a really good book for me to read. And then it gives us your ideas. So as you're decluttering, you're actually moving the chi. Yeah. You're moving the energy to, um, to bring in new information, new ideas, new opportunities. Mm-hmm. So let go of of at least 10 to 20% of everything that's in your cabinets or drawers. So it's quite a lot, but you can also give away to goodwill, Mm -hmm. right? Give away to people. So you're kind of moving the chi. So that's an important part. And then also very important to really attract more money is the way you position yourself when you are working. So always sit in what we call a power position. That means when you're working, even if you're at home working, like um, it doesn't have to be on your desk, can be on your dining room, can be in your sofa, always sit in such a position that you can see the door of the room that you are in. Because if you see the door, like I can see the door, if somebody Mm -hmm. knocks on the door, I can see them coming in. When you do that, your brain waves will actually go into alpha brain waves. When you go in alpha, you will be more creative, you will look for solutions, you will find new ideas. When you're sitting with your back to the door, like you're turning yourself and you're facing a wall and you're sitting with the door behind you, that's the worst position for abundance. It's called poverty position mm. because you're literally hitting a wall. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. And so you're literally in a financial wall, mm-hmm. literally. And so you, your brain goes into beta when you do that, especially when you have the door behind you. Because the door is where energy comes in. It's where people come in. It's where money comes in. And people sometimes say, but hey, I want to see the window. Yeah, but money doesn't come through the window. Yeah, because it comes from people and people use doors. And the people that use the windows, they don't come to give you money. They come to take your money away. Exactly. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. So always make sure you um, are not sitting against the wall and having the door behind you. So always turn yourself around so you can Mm -hmm. see the door and have some space on the other side of you. So you cannot have like files and boxes uh, in front of you. You have to have space in front of you so you can breathe your energy. Because when we are in beta vibration and we sit sitting facing a wall, we go into fear, we go into concerns, we go into um, like defocus. And so we can't just make money. Like think about the president of the United States. He's not sitting with his desk against the wall, right? right. He's sitting and he sees there's actually four doors in the uh, Oval Office and he can see all the four doors from that position. Yeah. Right. And he actually can see people sitting on the other side. There's some Mm -hmm. uh, sofas there. He can see him. They can talk to him. 
Another point is if you want to make more money, make sure you have a high chair, like a high back chair okay. like, where you can move to. Yeah. Okay. So yep. the higher the chair with armrests, the more you'll become the CEO of your life. You become the queen, the king of your life. That's it. So I need a new chair. You need a new chair. I need it. Yes. Well, it's a, I have a standing desk. So right now it's one of those, the chairs that you can go up high and it's nice. It's super comfy, but like you're saying, no, nope. I have no armrest. Generally I stand, but for today, nope, no armrest, new chair. New chair, because you need to think you're the queen of your business. And when you're the queen of your business, you start making money like a queen. Okay. So do you feel then, so then I'm, what I'm hearing is we should have a sitting desk, not a standing desk. Well, I prefer to have a, um, a sitting uh, desk, especially when you need to write mm -hmm. like contracts, when you just send emails, when you con communication. Of course, you know, I have a, also a, a standing desk if I want to. I can bring it higher up, you know, if I'm doing some work on it or I'm running, or, you know, like, or like a little um, yeah. workout or something. You can do that. But really to put your papers like really clear in the morning to start working, you need to have a sitting desk. Okay. I think that's, that's great. I think that just, you probably just helped 50% of the population of the world right now. <laughs> With that. Well, I have yeah. seen miracles happening just with this one tip that people said, I've been looking for a promotion. Within a week, they got the promotion. They got checks. They got money. They got inheritances. It's like they got new opportunities, no businesses coming to them because they changed that one thing. The, now, was that the chair? No, the desk. The, the desk. The, the, yeah. The, no, the, I'm all about yeah. I'm all about the desk. Now, how do you feel about the material of the desk? Well, you know, the material of the desk can be in many things. The only thing I would suggest not to have is to have a, a, a glass top where you can see through. Because when you have glass and you can see through, it actually says money will fall away. Yeah, business mm -hmm. will fall away. So it can be glass, but then like a matte glass, so you can't see your feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So the rest can be glass, okay. metal, wood. But something substantial, yeah, mm -hmm. something strong. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Now, as far as, and I can't remember, I, I read something that you talked about getting like million dollar bills and placing them in a certain area. Will you share what that was? I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. So, yeah, so there, you know, you can actually create like a million dollar bill, like you can buy these things, right? So you can definitely put that also on your vision board if you want. You can put it in your success direction. Um, but, you know, make sure you write down for what you get this million dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because people like, oh, I put a million dollar. But I said, yeah, but the universe needs details. Yeah. So always write down, like, I get this million dollar for, I know, coaching, consulting, uh, writing a book, uh, I don't know, whatever you, investment you want to do, always make sure you're very clear because the universe is always ready to give us everything, but we need to be more clear, mm -hmm. more detailed, because I always say the more details you give to the universe, the more the universe can come quickly to answer your question. That makes complete sense. I know I have a few million dollar bills hanging around. <laughs> so am I supposed to write how I got them or how I'm going to use it? Well, you can do both okay. actually, but I would for, for, first say how you got them. You know, you got a million dollars. You don't have to say how into details, like, right. Um, it can be um, for this business. Mm -hmm. you know, let's say you have different businesses, right? right. You can say a million dollars is in my account for this business. Yeah. Um, or I uh, have a million dollars to buy a, a home, right? So you can actually, for what it is, for what kind of thing you receive it, for consulting and so forth, or you can say for what you're going to use it. Hello and welcome to my podcast, Whispering Vibes, Human to Human, the show that opens up new vistas of activating the powers of universe lying dormant within us. My name is Lefton General Bipin Gupta and 14 episodes of my show are already trending on Spotify and Apple Podcast. These episodes will make you attract the wellness and abundance of life and lead you to the source of joy in relationships. Intuitively, 
you become privy to the powers of collective human consciousness a genius with solutions to every conceivable human problem so let's discover the incredible human reality by listening to my show whispering vibes human to human thank you love that okay that makes sense now for the love cuz everybody's always wanting to bring love in yeah let's talk about that some people talk about putting the picture of the exact person some people say don't put cut the heads off of people what should we be doing marie <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the first thing I would like to do is look at your bedroom, yeah? Okay. Because the bedroom is a place that anchors love, yeah? Because that's where, when you're with a partner, ultimately you will have your personal private time together. So I always would suggest to hang something loving above your headboard. So because when you go to bed, and loving means not a single person, because if you hang a single person, even if it's yourself, right. you will remain single. Mm-hmm. So put a picture, if you're already in a partnership, put a picture of you and your partner, uh, not with the heads off. That's the worst thing you can do, right? Um, but because <laughs> you're losing your head, like right. you, you get no, no focus. Um but like a loving updated new picture from recently could be your wedding picture if you want to, but Hey, you have evolved from your wedding. Right. And um, so place that there, or you can put two hearts or you can put love. You can put a beautiful quote. So something loving above the headboard, Uh, always make sure, especially if you're single that you have two pillows uh, on your bed, that you have two nightstands, two lamps, there is space in your closet for another person to bring in some um, um, wardrobe. And also when you wake up, what do you see? So it's not just what's on the headboards, what's on the other side of your bed. Yeah. It must be something to do with romance. Um, If you do have mirrors Mm -hmm. in your bed room, be careful because when you're single, you're doubling your loneliness by the mirrors if you're with two, you're doubling the partner. So you can attract other Ooh. partners mm-hmm. or flirtatious energy. So always cover the mirrors or put a screen in front of it um, or, um, you know, a curtain. Even screens can be acting as mirrors, by the way. Yeah. yeah. It's like the one that is here right now is not reflective. So that's fine. But if it's reflective, you have to cover it at night. Yeah. So look at your bedroom and like, would I make love here? Right. That's kind of what you ask you. Right. (laughs) So if it's like white and if it's like, there's no color in it. So good colors um, to up the game a little bit is not that you have to paint walls in this, but add some uh, little uh, acupuncture points, you know, like a little beautiful rose or like a salmon peach or a beautiful orange or a little bit of red could be in the pillows, could be in a throw, can be little items, not too much, but just a few things Mm -hmm. to brighten the space up. And I would definitely avoid to have blue or green um, wallpaper because that is actually not supporting love. Okay. Well, that's really great advice. Now, if someone's trying to bring in love and they're adding that on their vision board, or is that something that we put on our vision board? Yeah, of course. Okay. You can put it in your relationship direction, but then I would also look in your relationship direction based on your birthday, uh, in the bedroom, in the living room. Um, What is there right now? Like say in your living room, you have put all pictures of your family hey, yeah, you will have a lot of family, but that's not love, yeah? Right. So um, in your um, bedroom, in your relationship direction, you really want to have things that support that. And if you get the energy number book, you will see that for per energy number, there are other things that you can place, other colors you can use, other mm-hmm. items you can place. So for example, you can do two rose quartz hearts, mm-hmm. yeah? Yep. And put that in your relationship direction. That is always something that helps a lot of people. Uh, it could be a beautiful statue of uh, two people, you know, whatever mm-hmm. you like, you know, uh, together. Um, if you put a picture up from people that you think, oh, they, they are so in love. Let's say I had this person and she put a picture up from like a celebrity couple, yeah? 
And I said to her, but you know, you don't know if the celebrity couple is doing really well. Be careful for that. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, and indeed, two months later, they got divorced. So oh, geez. So, okay. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful. Okay. Right? So it's better to take pictures of a loving couple that you don't know mm-hmm. than of a couple that you do know. Okay. So then that begs the question on the vision board, do you put people's faces or you do you just put like, like two hands holding or where you just see the bottom half of the people so that you don't no, see the you faces? Can do, do, no, you can do pictures with a face. Uh, okay. That's totally fine. No, I, I never like cutting things off. Yeah. Okay. But you can definitely do also like I had this woman and she wanted to get engaged. So she had like a hand with the, you know, the diamond ring. Right. So, I mean, whatever you feel that you like and makes you smile. Yeah. So if you take a picture and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if that will work. It will not work. Yeah. Right. If you take a picture and you're like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. I would love because you have to keep looking at that vision board. Yeah? Right. So think about this like an art piece that you're making. Mm-hmm. So if you put something on that you don't like, don't hang it on. Right. Okay. That makes complete sense. Now, what if, and I have like someone slipped in a question over here to me. <laughs> what if there's someone that really likes someone? Do they put a picture of that someone on their vision board? <laughs> or do they, they not? They can. They definitely can. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the universe um, will perhaps bring that person or somebody like that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah. So you can definitely do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In general, when you've been working with your clients, do you feel like there is this number one thing that people are always missing in their feng shui? Well, you know, it's really interesting. A lot of people always are focusing on their kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're always like, oh, I want to feng shui in my kitchen. And I said, yeah, but you know, it, that's not where you live. That's not where you sleep. That's not where you work. So uh, take away any personal items out of your kitchen. And I've seen also many times people put too much personal things in their bathrooms because like pictures of, or they make the little altars in the mm-hmm, bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I always say to people, don't do that because a bathroom is where you go to the bathroom. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of sinking water, like the water drains. Um, so it is not very fresh energy. So don't put anything personal in the bathroom or in the kitchen. Okay. That's great to know. So that brings me to this question then. So of course we're all at home, you know, for the most part still, and we're all jimmying around. No, I'm lucky enough. I do have a separate office. However, my dining room has become the workout room. (laughs) It is full of workout equipment that may or may not be getting used. So how good or not so great is that to take a dining area that you don't eat in it? Like there's no dining room table. I don't eat there. I eat either outside on the lanai or you know, somewhere else. Is that good chi? Not so great chi? Well, a dining room is, um, you know, something that we don't use that much. Right. Yeah. So if if you would uh, work there, like during the COVID, a lot of people work in the dining room. Yeah. Then you have to make sure that you start looking at your dining room as your office. Yeah. And always make sure there is no, you know, uh, things from the breakfast on your table, everything has to be clear and clean. So if you are not using it really to, to eat, then you can actually make it a storage room for and a workout room. It's all what you like doing. You know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's not like something, a dining room where you would spend a lot of time. So the three rooms where I really want you to focus on is the bedroom, the living room, because that's where your social life is unfolding. Right. And your workspace, your office, or wherever that might be. Okay, that makes sense. Now, for those that have Buddhas, we know Buddha is a big deal for people. Like, I have a really cool Buddha. um, And I have him towards the front door because I was always told he should be facing the front door. I don't know if that's true, but it's stuck with me for years now. Where, where's yeah. the great place to put a Buddha? I, I love Buddhas too. Me so too. <laughs> so, um, but I would not put a Buddha at the entrance, to okay. be honest. Yeah. All right. Because otherwise you're telling too many times that you, when you come in, it's like you come in a temple. Yeah. And to be honest, in the temple, people don't make enough money. Yeah. True. And they have to kind of chase after the money because they have to beg for the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would not do that. Okay. I would rather place it. If you look at your front door, just 
if you look straight to the end of your house mm -hmm. at the other end of your front door, yeah, like the other end of the house of the front door, that's where I would put the Buddha because then it's like God is supporting you. Yeah, or they can be a saint, can be mm -hmm. angels. That's a good place. Or you always can put it in your wisdom direction. Yeah. Great. So okay. You wisdom direction. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, well, you know, I just want to have it in my living room and I don't really focus on the uh, wisdom direction, you always can put in the, um, if it's like a, a, a meditating Buddha, I would put it in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. If it's more like a laughing Buddha, I would put it in the Southeast, like a laughing Buddha with a big belly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's like yeah. in the Southeast that's section. That's what I have. You have more a okay. female Buddha because some people go for more female right. Buddhas like a Korean or a goddess, um, then you can put that in the Southwest. But same, if you have like a Christian background, you have Jesus, then I would put a statue of Jesus like where I, the, like the Buddha, the Northeast. If you have a picture of an image of Lady Mary, for example, you would put it in the Southwest because that's where the female energy of the divine can be present. Okay, and then what if it's cross? For those that have crosses, um, I always suggest to people to hang it somewhere in the center of the house. Yeah, be careful uh, where you hang it. Some people will like, yeah, but that's like my religion. Okay, I put it in my wisdom direction. I would not put it really when you come into your entrance. Don't hang a cross mm. so visible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, unless it's a harmonic cross that is as long as uh, wide. Um, if it's like a cross with Jesus on that is really suffering, it's not the first thing you want to see when you come into mm, the house. Good point. Yeah. What about statues of crosses? You know, I go into houses and they have these big, beautiful crystal crosses. Where should someone put something? Like, should that be in their office? Or where should that be? So, you, know, you mean crosses or just other crystals? Crosses. So I, I didn't Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, big crystal crosses. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen that. Oh, but yeah. um, so one of the places they can put it is in the northwest section. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. the crystal um, will be very good there. Okay. Well, that's really interesting to know. We're getting to that time in the show, Marie. What is one thing that no one knows about you? Mm, wow, that's a really interesting thing um, that nobody knows. That means also not even my husband. <laughs> well, we could give a little leeway there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, I think most people don't really know um, how down to earth I am. Yeah. So, you know, people, they're always like thinking, oh, you know, Marie and she's in the secret and she's so well known. But I'm a really down to earth mother. The first and the, the most important thing for me is to be a mother for my children. And I love being with my children. I love being at home and I love cooking. I love playing with my dogs. And so I just, um, I'm just a regular woman, to be honest, uh, that also do this amazing work, but I'm so grateful for. But yeah, I, and I think um, just staying very authentic yourself is, I think, very important mm -hmm. to me. Oh, I think that's beautiful. And you are just a love. Your energy is so vibrant and just so loving. What is one last parting piece of advice you'd like to give to our listeners to help them through this time, be it with feng shui and the energy? What would you say? Well, I have seen that um, since the COVID time that people, as they're now more at home, they become more aware how important the energy is of their home. Yeah. And so sometimes they have not paid attention to that for a while, you know, because they were always working, always outside. And suddenly they're like, oh, I need to be with my family uh, or with myself in a more contained environment. So I do believe that um, it gives us um, a possibility yeah, to look at what we have. And also, first of all, to be grateful for what we have. Yeah, because especially the women that are in the Western world, uh, we do have so much wonderful things already. And so look at everything you have. And when you let go of things, be grateful you had it in your life. That's now going to pass on to somebody that perhaps needs that, um, that doesn't have the money for this, as you're giving it to a uh, thrift stores or goodwill. So I do believe that um, even in these times, we can really take time for ourselves and take care of ourselves, but use this time also your environment to support yourself. 
That is beautiful. Thank you, Marie. Thank you so Thank much you. for being here today. And please let our listeners know where is the best place to reach you and where they can find your book and your courses and get, get in touch with you. Of course. So they can go to mariediamond.com. It's very easy. And they can go to Instagram, mariediamond8. And there's a lot of uh, Instagram lives that we have there. People can ask questions. We have a lot of videos there. Of course, there's a YouTube channel for Marie Diamond. And there's a lot of videos there that can give you more information on how to function for your children and how to uh, function for your living room and for your office. And so much information is available for free everywhere. And of course, I'm also on Clubhouse um, and I have my own podcast, Mary, the Mary Diamond podcast that people can look into um, to have more information. Wonderful. Well, I hope that they all reach out to you as I have. And I want to thank you again, Marie, for coming on the show, sharing your incredible knowledge, your insights and your energies. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and good luck and make it to the top three of podcasts. That is the goal. Thank you, Marie. Thank you so much. Well, as we say, until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within.